Now there are a, a number of ways we can look at resulting lift distributions on our wing. So if this is our wing here, uh, and we want to look at uh, what this, what the lift distribution looks like, um, uh, the the local lift uh, is simply equal to uh, rho v infinity times the local gamma. Uh, and this is the this is the lift per unit span, uh, a, a dimensional lift per unit span depends on the local vorticity, right? So we have our our lifting line model here, uh, where we've got our lifting line, and uh, and then vorticity being shed. Well, at any location, we have some strength of gamma, and the local lift is uh, is directly proportional to that local gamma. Uh, now. From lifting line theory, we can actually write the strength of gamma in terms of an infinite series. Uh, and so uh, once we've truncated that to some finite Fourier series and multiplied it by this rho v infinity to get the local lift, uh, what we get from that is 2 times rho v infinity squared b times a summation from n equals 1 up to the number of terms that we've retained in the series, uh, a sub n times sine of n theta. Okay, so this is simply our infinite sine series that represents uh, this, this uh, local lift uh, distribution, L tilde, as a function of span. Now, there are a number of ways we can... Uh, non-dimensionalize this if we want to look at a dimensionless lift distribution. And uh, the first way um, uh, that I'm going to cover is uh, just to look at what we have in here. And and that are, th we, we have these two different components here. Uh, the one uh, on the left here, this rho v infinity squared, that's obviously our dynamic pressure or related to our dynamic pressure. And then uh, we have a length here, b, uh, which is the span of the wing. And so uh, in order to non-dimensionalize our local lift distribution, uh, we, we usually use uh, 1 half rho v infinity squared. That's the dynamic pressure. But then we also need a length, not an area, uh, but a length here in order because this is a, a lift per unit length. Uh, and so we need some length uh, to, uh, to non-dimensionalize that by. So, we, uh, so, so one uh, obvious uh, solution would be to use the length that is that is in this equation, which is b. So we can divide by b, and uh, and what we're going to call this is uh, I'm going to call this C L hat. Oops, there we go, C L hat. Um, this is somewhat of a non-conventional way to to uh, uh, to non-dimensionalize lift coefficient, and we'll look at a more conventional way here in a moment. But it's actually the most straightforward when you look at simply the components of this equation here. And uh, we know from, uh, from lifting line theory that uh, we can break down these capital A sub n. What we've done in, in the previous videos is shown that we can actually break those down to look at contributions from uh, the plan form, which will be little a sub n alpha minus alpha L0 at the root of the wing. Um, minus b sub n omega, this is the contribution from the uh, washout, uh, plus c sub n times delta a, this would be the contribution from an aileron deflection, and uh, plus d sub n p bar. Okay, um, okay, so so when we, when we plug these uh, a sub n values in here, we can actually rewrite uh, and then non-dimensionalize this equation. We can look at the contribution to uh, CL hat as a function of all these different things. So the first would be uh, the contribution from the plan form, uh, which uh, when we plug this in, we're going to get a 4 alpha minus alpha L0 at the root uh, times the summation from n equals 1 to n of a sub little or little a sub n sine uh, n theta so that's our plan form contribution and then the next uh, term would be minus four times capital omega times that same summation from n equals one to n but of the b sub n terms times sine n theta uh, and that's our contribution from washout 
And then uh, we'd also have plus 4 times delta A times the summation from n equals 1 to n of C sub n sine of n theta. And then uh, finally, our contribution from rolling rate, uh, 4 P bar times the summation from n equals 1 to n of little d n sine of n theta. Okay, so... Uh, so we have uh, what this gives us is um, is a a lift. Uh, it shows us the non-dimensional lift distribution, and uh, we could actually just plot the this term in this equation, uh, which would be the contribution to our CL hat uh, from plan form, and then this term is the contribution from washout, from aileron deflection, and from rolling rate. And so we can see how each of these. Uh, each of these uh, parameters on the wing or design parameters or, or operational parameters here um, uh, affect our lift distribution and how that changes uh, with each of these. And of course, we can look at the summation of all of these uh, and get a total lift uh, a CL hat distribution across the wing, which is a non-dimensional lift distribution, which uh, where that, that local lift has been non-dimensionalized by uh, the dynamic pressure and the wing span. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Now, perhaps a more conventional way to do this is to simply look at um, uh, a non-dimensional uh, local lift coefficient, which would be uh, the local lift divided by one half rho v infinity squared. Usually, the way we, we non-dimensionalize a local lift coefficient or two-dimensional lift coefficient is by using the local chord. Uh, and so if we do that, um, we could go through the same process. And what we'd find is that we simply get the solution for CL hat uh, times B over C, where C is a function of uh, Z, and, uh, and obviously B is a constant, the wing span. Okay, so, uh, so this is simply another way to, again, this is, this is perfectly legal. This is a non-dimensional uh, term here, uh, and uh, we're going to call this CL tilde because it's the traditional way of, of non-dimensionalizing a two-dimensional lift, uh, uh, dimensional lift, uh, and then you use the local chord in order to do that. This is what we would do from airfoil theory, for example. We use the chord to non-dimensionalize that section lift. Uh, so we get a section lift coefficient, and uh, but if you look at the, the equation for lifting line theory, you see that uh, actually B is a very logical uh, choice for that length to non-dimensionalize by. And so uh, if we do that, we get this what we call CL hat. Uh, this is a different kind of distribution. So let's look at what these distributions look like. And, and again, um, working, we could work through this process for each of these terms uh, and, and write those out um, and, uh, and get, you know, a CL... Uh, tilde uh, due to plan form and washout and, and aileron deflection and p-bar. So let's look at what some of these solutions uh, uh, could look like on a sample wing here. So what I have uh, here is a, a a wing with an aspect ratio of, uh, of 8 and a taper ratio of 0.5. Okay, and uh, uh, so you can see what that geometry looks like. And, and I just have these ailerons. They're kind of large for uh, probably for this example, but it's just an example, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so, so this is uh, just an aileron that I've chosen to put on there. And then uh, what I've done here is, uh, is I've applied the optimum little omega distribution. This is the optimum washout distribution. And uh, by doing that, what it should do is return... Uh, See, th this plan form without any twist will not give us the elliptic lift distribution, but if we twist it uh, according to this distribution here and, and apply the correct amount of twist, uh, which we have done, by the way, this is operating at a lift coefficient of 0 0.8, and I've used the optimum uh, amount of twist as, as well as the optimum uh, distribution of twist. Um, okay, so when we do that, we would expect to get back the elliptic lift distribution in the absence of aileron deflection or rolling rate. So, so these first uh, these first two plots here are for uh, p bar equals zero, so no rolling rate, and delta a equals zero. So we're not deflecting the aileron. We also are not rolling the aircraft. And so, uh, what you can see is that the plan form all by itself without any twist 
uh, produces this uh, CL hat distribution. Again, this is a CL hat. And then we're, we're also here gonna look at the CL tilde. These are just two different ways to look at the lift distribution or the non-dimensional lift distribution on a wing. Uh, so, so you can see the effects of plan form here. This would be that uh, the lift distribution uh, if we didn't have any twist. And then you can see uh, the green is a washout here. So we've, we've twisted the wing and, uh, and it, changes, it, it produces this change in our lift distribution across the wing, which when you add those two together, the blue and the green, you get this black total lift distribution, which happens to be a perfectly elliptic lift distribution. Okay, uh, now on the right-hand side, uh, we're doing the exact same thing. Uh, we've got the, the lift due to plan form in blue, the lift due to uh, twist in green, and uh, you can see those look a bit different than, than they did to their counterparts here on the left-hand side. That's simply because this, uh, on the right-hand side, we're normalizing the local lift at any location here. We're normalizing it by the local cord, which changes. See, at the root, we have a larger cord than at the tip, and, uh, and it linearly changes. And so, uh, so we're dividing the, the actual lift at any location by a slightly different number as we move along here. That's okay, that's, that's a conventional way to do it, and we're gonna call that CL tilde distribution. Um, uh, but what it produces is something that looks like this black, uh, uh, this this total uh, lift tilde distribution uh, is here in black, and you can see that it that that doesn't look elliptic, and that's because we are dividing this elliptic lift distribution by the local cord instead of by some constant across the entire wing, which would be the wingspan on the left hand side. And so, uh, so on the left hand side, we can see that that's an elliptic lift distribution because we've divided every point by the wingspan, where on the right-hand side, we're dividing by the local cord. Doesn't matter which way you look at this, as long as you understand what you're looking at. Okay, so let's now add P bar and delta A, and these plots get a little bit more exciting. Uh, so uh, on the left-hand side, again, we have the, the uh, contribution from plan form in blue that hasn't changed. Uh, the, the green has also not changed. That's our, our contribution from washout. But now we're going to add some aileron deflection and rolling rate. And uh, you can actually see that the aileron deflection in the, in the direction that we've deflected it uh, is opposite to the rolling rate. And by the way, we're choosing the steady state rolling rate so that, this, uh, so that the, roll, the, the, the moments created by rolling rate and, uh, and aileron perfectly cancel each other. And so you can, you can see that, uh, you know, if we were to draw a line here at zero uh, across here, that, that the red uh, distribution would roughly cancel the, the purple distribution. Actually, it, it exactly cancels it. Um, so we have no net rolling moment uh, because we're at our steady rolling rate for that given aileron, or aileron deflection. Anyway, you can see that that the lift uh, you know from the aileron is is uh, positive one on one side, negative on the other, and and just the opposite from the rolling rate. We've got positive on the one side and negative on the other. When we add all these together, uh, we get this total lift distribution, this black line, uh, which, uh, which looks a bit different than we did uh, you know in in steady level flight where we didn't have any aileron deflection or roll rate, uh, and it's not perfectly elliptic because we're adding in now the effects of aileron and rolling rate. Or we can look at the same thing, looking at CL tilde instead of CL hat, uh, where where each of these again has been uh, non-dimensionalized by the local cord instead of by the the global wingspan value, and uh, and so you, again you can see we've got this aileron deflection uh, that's offsetting the rolling rate on either side, uh, the the twist the effects of of twist are identical to what they were before, and uh, when we add all this together. Uh, we get this this global or this total lift uh, coefficient CL tilde across the wing that again uh, is a is really a distribution of of local lift coefficients because we've divided by that the the local cord at each location instead of the local or, or the, instead of the wing span which is a constant value across the wing. So these are just some examples of ways to look at uh, lift distributions. There's no right or wrong way uh, to look at these. Uh, sometimes I prefer looking at them uh, in terms of CL hat, simply because I can see how close I am to an elliptic distribution. Of course, you can't see that from uh, from from a CL tilde distribution uh, because you're divided by the local cord. But uh, but but uh, you can see that here in this uh, in the CL hat distribution. But uh, sometimes it's helpful to look at the CL tilde distributions because. Um, 
for example, at, at one location, uh, let's just choose this uh, minus 0.3, for example, we've got, this is our maximum local lift coefficient that we're going to see on the wing. So this, this particular wing section here is going to see a local lift coefficient of a, over 0.8. Uh, now, the, our global lift coefficient is 0.8, so we could draw a line across here. That's our global lift coefficient. Uh, but uh, at this particular wing section is going to be at a higher lift coefficient. And, and at the center, we're going to be below 0.8. And, and obviously, out of the tips, we're going to be below that. And, uh, and so that's helpful to know that we're most likely, if we were to continue to increase our angle of attack, we're most likely to stall in, one, in these regions here because uh, those, are, those have the highest local lift, or, or lift coefficient. Uh, where you're looking at the, the lift coefficient uh, that's been normalized by the cord, the local cord. So uh, again, different reasons to look at either of these, and it's helpful to be able to understand both of them and, and why you might want to look at one instead of another in any given situation. One last thing I'd like to point out before we leave this topic, um, and I'm just going to come back up here to draw this, is uh, let's say we have an elliptic wing uh, we have a perfectly elliptic wing. Just imagine that that's elliptic. And, uh, and that, we know that that, uh, and it has zero twist. We know that that produces an elliptic lift distribution, okay? Well, uh, uh, so this would be, uh, this lift distribution, this elliptic lift distribution is really a CL uh, hat distribution that we're looking at. Because if we took the local lift at any location, and divided by the, the local cord at that location, you'd see that as we get out to the wingtips, uh, our cord gets really small, and so we're dividing by a smaller and smaller number. Uh, uh, near the root, we're dividing by a larger number. And so it turns out that, um, that CL hat uh, looks like an elliptic lift distribution, but if you looked at CL tilde here as a function of span, uh, you would actually get a constant. Uh, so, so that's uh, one unique thing about an elliptic plan form is that the local lift coefficient, CL tilde, uh, is constant uh, for uh, an elliptic wing with no twist. Okay, so it's an elliptic wing, has, if it has no twist, then it's producing the elliptic lift distribution. Um, but that lift distribution is really a CL hat type of distribution. Uh, the, the local lift coefficient, CL tilde, once you divide by the local cord, uh, produces a CL tilde that is constant across the wing. And that CL tilde is equal to, uh, CL tilde is equal to the total lift coefficient that that wing is producing. So anyway, that's something kind of unique about uh, about elliptic wings and uh, and just another uh, plug for why you might want to consider CL hat uh, in some cases or or CL tilde in other cases.